I'm going to show you how this was all planned out from day one, from day one. There's a lot of wealth to be made, but the fact is most people are doing it wrong. Wall Street wins 100% of the time. So in today's video, I'm going to break down how this has all been planned out from day one. People can say this, people can say that, but I'm telling you, this is the greatest transformation in wealth in history and the biggest switch in your financial system in history. So I'm number one, going to show you how it's all been planned out, the facts, figures, numbers, logic, and proof. And number two is how we've taken advantage of this to radically transform our families' lives and for generations to come. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how Visa, the number one transactor, one of the number one transactors in credit cards, think about that for just a moment, is deep in crypto and has been there for a very long time. And number two, how we're starting to see the interweb of all this stuff, right? They announced that Uphold is dropping Tether, but they're keeping USDC circle. It's all connected family. And everybody's stuck on the short term. And that's where people are going to get wrecked. As we talk about this today, crypto is collapsing down. People are panicking. So if you don't develop a long term fundamental horizon you will get wrecked in this space most people have never accumulated a large amount of wealth like this before and what they do is they buy things that melt make the wealthy wealthier so on the back of the video i'm going to break down exactly the mistakes that i made and how i corrected that and how i've radically transformed my family's lives so let's dive right into this video today okay so the first thing i want to show you <clears throat> this was on coin days coin desk excuse me it said visa is the bridge between payments and blockchain technologies. This is the head of crypto. So the gentleman we're about to listen to is the head of crypto for Visa. But what I want you to listen to is how long they've been working on this. I shared with you guys back in 2007 when Jamie Dimon said that uh, cryptocurrency is a pet rock, right? He would fire anybody for using it. They were already building Onyx. We know Ripple was with uh, is uh, inside of Bank of America's patent. We know that Wells Fargo is with R3 and Visa started working on this in 2016 to 2017. So you have to get out of the short term mindset. This is a long term transition. Let's check this out. Uh, and you've been there for a while as the head of crypto. I'm wondering, from a couple of years ago, how have the conversations changed from then to now internally? Like well, the, the ideas you're advocating for, the the projects you're pushing, how has it changed over time inside of Visa? So we've made really steady progress you know, consistently every week for five years now. And we actually set up the crypto team uh, in the depths of the bear market late 2018, early 2019. And so our approach was really taking a long term view. So if crypto was so speculative and it wasn't going to be here long term, then why would they have set up a team? in late 2017, 2018. Think about that for just a moment. Guys, this has been planned out for a long time. Uh, it's saying if Visa cares about any technology that has the potential to improve payments. And so we wanted to take our time, you know, figure out ways that we could you know, use these technologies to support you know, our partners. Uh, and you know, we've started to you know, experiment with stable coins. We started to do a lot of research, a lot of education you know, for our clients. Uh, and our goal is to just continue to make uh, consistent, steady progress uh, over the next decade. Uh, and we're really excited about the opportunities that particularly stable coins can enable. Five years. Okay. So remember, so they removed Tether off of Uphold, right? They kept USDC, which is connected to Circle, which I'm going to show you the honor connected, right? They're all talking about stable coins now, right? We got Ripple launching their stable coin. It is all problem, reaction, solution. First, they resist it, then they sue it, then they regulate it of the bulls and the bears that was a nice little setup we didn't know we were doing there with our puppets um internally has there ever been any any pushback anyone ever questioning you through the bear market like should we be spending this time and effort building in this industry that seems to be quite volatile there has it. I think we're, we've been really fortunate to be at a company that has a culture that, you know, really from the beginning, from the early days of Visa and, you know, DHOC, you know, going all the way back to the 60s, you know, recognizing that value is going to be digitized. It's going to move over many different networks. And we want to be this single connection point for clients, you know, to move value in many different places, in many different payment flows. Uh, and so we recognize that, you know, the prices of crypto assets are volatile. We don't really care about the prices. We care about the underlying technology and the ways that it can be deployed within the payments ecosystem. But it takes time to do that. Uh, and you have to do it in a controlled, uh, compliant, 
you know, safe way. Uh, and so we're really here for the long haul and have continued to make steady progress, you know, despite the market cycles. Okay. So that was the key factor right there. So that's where my long-term mindset has always come in. I'm always looking long-term. So when it's collapsing down, like today, I get excited because I believe in the technologies because I'm not fudded in and fudded out by any crypto influencers, anybody out there that's influencing saying that crypto is not going to be here because I'm looking at the large companies and what they're doing. Why would Visa, who has 12.3 trillion in payment volume, they're one of the biggest payment processors in the world, be so vested in cryptocurrency? Why? Think about that for just a moment. That's just logical, okay? So when you have a logical circuit like that, you don't get fudded in and fudded out of crypto. You don't panic sell. And on the back end, I'm going to share with you the mistakes that I made in the front end and how I corrected those mistakes on the back end here to make sure that my family is secured for the rest of our lives. Okay, so this is right here on Visa's website, Visa's Network of Choices for Crypto Wallets, Circle, Coinbase, Crypto.com, Fold, YRX, and Zappo. Is it X Zappo? Okay, so now we're going to focus on Circle and Coinbase. We know Coinbase is connected to BlackRock through Aladdin. We know Circle is connected to BlackRock, which I'm going to show you once again through the USDC coin and the Build Fund. Okay, so these are all interconnected. Now we're starting to see the monopolization surface. You see what I'm saying? At first, there was all these different things. First, they resist it. Then they sue it. Then they regulate it and all the cream rises to the top. And when regulation kicks in, a lot of people are going to get wiped out. And the cool thing about when regulation, well, I don't know if there's any cool thing, but when regulation comes in, the institutions are going to come in. We haven't even gotten full institutional adoption. Okay. So first we saw the, that's the head of crypto saying they've been in it since 2017, 2018. We see visas connected to circle coinbase crypto.com. And then if we go over here, this is on Visa's website right here. It says digital currency comes to Visa settlement platform. When DHOC founded Visa, he envisioned creating a world's premier system for exchange of value. In today's world, that means adapting to Visa's network to accommodate new form factors of money, which is crypto. With this in mind, today we proudly shared some historic news about the digital currency efforts, the transaction settlement with Visa USD. USD coin, USDC, a regulated stable coin backed by the US dollar and transacts over the Ethereum blockchain. Ethereum deemed not a security. They didn't have to spend $200 million to battle the SEC. They got a free pass. Go figure. The crypto enthusiasts and payment experts among us, the significance of this news may be apparent, but uh, my, excuse me, the significance of this news may be apparent, but for everyone else, we wanted to take this moment to explain what we've done, how we've got here, and why we think it's so significant. So they break down all this. The journey to USDC, a vital first step was identifying the first digital asset we would offer our clients as an alternative traditional settlement to currency or tradition let me read that correctly. That could have gotten misconstrued to traditional settlement currency. Our due diligence efforts, due diligence efforts included examination of demand, stability, and security. USDC measured up against all these criteria. USDC is nearing 110 billion, excuse me, 10 billion in circulation supply with a robust developer community and growing adoption across crypto companies and financial institutions. Furthermore, USDC and the center consortium, the government body behind USDC, has also shown a track record of clear compliance and regulatory engagement to install confidence in USDC. It's here to stay, guys. In addition to the explosion of supply of usage, we've also seen the emergence of new cases forming around USDC, including cross-border business-to-business and trade settlement remittances. Or could it have to be the fact that all the uh, top people are starting to circle its surface? We know Circle was at world economic forum ripple is at world economic forum the year earlier there was tons of crypto companies and then there was just a couple left at world economic forum larry fink six on the board of trustees for the world economic forum he's the largest asset manager in the world his mission is to move the mission and purpose forward okay so we've gone over circle many times we'll recircle back to things often throughout my youtube channel with with um you know, with with not even fearing judgment, because what you repeatedly do gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. What gets ingrained in your subconscious mind becomes your unconscious activity. So when the markets start collapsing like this, you're like, ah, I know what I hold. I know what I hold. I'm not backing out. Full backed, fully backed digital dollar. This is circle, right? And if we go over here, so let's pause for a moment. So we got Visa. Okay, they've been working on this since 2018. Okay, they're connected to Coinbase, or they're a processor for or 
partnered with Coinbase. We got Circle, okay? They're evolving money. They support USDC, which is Circle, okay? USDC, Circle, um, Black, they chose BlackRock for their reserve fund, okay? This is a BlackRock fund, so they hold their reserves with BlackRock, okay? So we got Visa has 12 trillion of payment processing. We got BlackRock, who has 10 point four trillion assets under management okay so this is why i've stayed so calm this is first the mistakes that i've made and this is how i've set myself up i'm only sharing it with you from my current paradigm so the first mistakes that i made when i went into cryptocurrency is i came from the banking system in 2017 i was an executive a vice president even though i was an executive i was in the banking system i didn't understand finances like i understand them now i didn't understand that wall street wins 100 percent of the time and that the stock market is a wave of energy right it's emotional jp morgan billionaires use astrology millionaires use charts <laughs> having just a 401k is a hope that you're going to retire at the right time what if you retired in between 2006 and 2008 when the market co collapsed you got to go back to a reset point for four years after that once it settles what if you did it in 2020 when the pandemic hit, right? What if you do it when we go into World War III and the markets come collapsing down? Who knows? It's a game of hope. Hope is not a strategy. Understanding the markets in ways as energy is. So the first mistake that I made is when I went into cryptocurrency. Early, late 2019, I got introduced. 2020, I got a, late 2019, early 2020, I got exposure to it, right? So when I got exposure to it, I was in a vertical strategy. I was running inside my businesses, still trading time for money. So all I did was bought a job. That's all I did. I went from working, trading time for money in a corporation, and I became a self-employed, different than entrepreneur. So I was working in my business, trading time for money. I took the money that I traded my time for money, and I put it into crypto. And I'm like, I'm going to get rich quick in crypto, right? Well, the problem was I was jumping from YouTuber to YouTuber, switching my coins, doing all these different things. I kept getting wrecked because I was focusing on the markets, which is emotional. And then I read a book called The Intelligent Investor, and I had some wise counsel that taught me diversification and taught me to invest in companies and not crypto or stocks. So I read the book Intelligent Investor. I started investing in companies. I invest them as companies, even though some of them aren't or have anything to do with a the company. They're uh, you know, basically like Bitcoin, right? There's no company, but I, I looked at it as a company. So I started building a long-term five to 10 year horizon. I started looking at these as innovative technologies, investing in them fundamentally. And I stopped looking at the charts. I set up an exit plan. So when they go up and they hit certain targets, that's all I focus on. When they hit the targets on the way up, I ladder out three to four times as everybody's come rushing in because Wall Street wins 100% of the time. You are the exit liquidity especially with all these institutions coming in. You're going to be the exit liquidity. You're going to try to catch the top. You're going to be watching all these hypey influencers. Oh, it's going to 100K. It's going to 200K. And you're waiting for that. And the next thing you know, you're going to wake up and it's going to be down 80%. So on the way up, I use Merlin, the smartest way to track your crypto. Okay, I exit on the way up. Now, here's the key factor that I changed. I diversified big time out of cryptocurrency. So you hear me talk about insurance all the time. For me, the reason why I do that, there's three rules that I live by. Number one, secure my principal. Insure my money. Number two is I want to compound my money. I don't need anything sexy. If I pull it out of these high speculative things, I made a ton of profit. I lock into something that'll give me around six to 10, six to 12%. And if I can do that every seven years, I'm going to compound or every 10, every seven years at 10%, my money's going to compound. And number three, secure, compound. And I want to be able to grow my money, richest man in Babylon. So I pull profits from high risk, high return, left side of the risk pyramid. During the bull run, I pull it down the risk pyramid and I insure my money. That's why the banks have tons of insurance. That's why wealthy insure their money because I want to secure my principal. So when it comes collapsing down the markets, my principal is guaranteed. Number two, I want to compound my money. I want that nice rate of return. And number three, I want access to my money just in case I need to borrow against it. And the beauty is I can borrow against it tax-free. So that's one factor of my diversification. So I pull profits, secure, compound, and grow. Locked in, family, legacy. Number two, is I focus on my businesses. I continue to expand them so that we can continue to increase the value of our companies, number one, for exits in the future, and number two, to create more earned income. And then I put it back into the markets, right? And I keep repeating. Number three is we're going into real estate. That's the future for us, 2024, 2025 multifamily. Precious metals, I use silver and I use Bitcoin as my gold. Okay, so you see what I'm doing? I'm working to pull money out of these markets down into security legacy. And then on top of that, I set up what's called the Rockefeller Trust. So that when I pass away, the legacy continues. Okay. So that's exact. So the biggest mistakes that I made uh, in the past were 
is this vertical strategy, getting rich quick. I'm going to get rich quick. You have to let go of that. You have to completely let go of that mentality. Okay. There's going to be some of these cryptos that get destroyed when regulation comes out. You can't be attached to these things. So you have to really ask yourself, are, is the cryptos or the investments you have in stocks, are they going to survive regulation? Remember the auto boom, the big three, the dot com boom, the big three, it's going to be Bitcoin, Ethereum and XRP. Those are going to be the big three. And then there's going to be a bunch of other ones that are going to survive as well. But there's 10,000 cryptos out there. So we have to get it out of that get rich quick mentality. You got to build a five to 10 year horizon. You got to get focused on fundamentals. You have to look at your budget. We got to stop buying things in America that we can't afford to impress people we don't like. OK, because a lot of people are going to get rich in crypto. And they're going to throw it into a Lambo or a house to prove to people. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Do I like nice cars? Absolutely. Do I love fast, fast cars? Absolutely. Someday I will have a Lambo. I love supercars. But if you ever see me driving that, that is paid for by an asset. I completely fripped my brain. Now, the next step is I'm teaching my children this. My daughter's an investor. My son is eight. He understands assets and liabilities. So the next thing is to pass it to next generation. So there's a lot of information, okay? So first of all, we know that crypto is here to stay innovative technologies. So number two is we need to learn how to secure, compound, and grow. Number three, we need to get into a long-term mindset. So I love you guys. I appreciate you. Down below, if you need any support at all, so I have many different factors. So if that's a lot of info and if you're still here, we'd love to support you. Number one is I have what's called a needs assessment down there. I want to be very clear what this is. Okay. Um, I teach people how I ensure my wealth. I have a whole team that helps you do that. If you fill out the needs assessment, we'll have a team member reach out to you and show you how exactly we ensure our wealth. There's many different products and services. That's why it's a needs assessment to see what you need. Okay. Number two is you can join our Warrior Academy, our Education Academy. And number three, you can download my free book, which gives you a whole pattern of what I just talked about. Okay, so there's many resources to help you out during these uh, crazy times. So I love you guys. I appreciate you. As we always say, Warriors, rise, get your shit together. Let's go. So that's in the description of the video or my social media platform. Click the link. We'll see you on the inside.